was the winter following Wizard Waitley's death that I first met Wilbur. He came in person to the library at Miss Catonic University to consult a copy of the hideous Necronomicon, which was kept there in its Latin version, as printed in Spain in the 17th century. I tell you, when he came into my office, I was appalled at his appearance. Eight feet tall, shabby, dirty, bearded. But I was even more appalled by his voice when he spoke to me. I wrote you a letter a month past, Doctor. I wanted a loan of the book. Well, that's a book that's never loaned from this library. I doubt if it is from any library. Well, I have to see it then. Oh, very well, it's, it's kept right here. As you know, the, there are only three copies of this book in existence. That's why we're careful. Here, you can look at it on this table. Wizard said it would be on page 751. What? What is it you're looking for? The formula, the long chant, the one that opens the gate to yog sutha I felt a wave of fright as tangible as a draft from the tomb. It seemed somehow like, like the spawn of another dimension, like something only partly of mankind, linked to black gulfs beyond all spheres of force and matter, space and time. And presently he raised his head and spoke again. It's here, all right, but I'll have to have a copy. Oh, that paragraph there? Oh, I don't Do know. You know Latin, Doctor? Yes, certainly. Then read it, Doctor. Let's hear how you make it out. All right, that shouldn't be difficult. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, nor is it to be thought um, that man is the oldest or the last of Earth's masters. The old ones were, and the old ones shall be. Not in the... The, the, the spaces that we know, but but between them. But only Yag Sothoth knows the gate. Yag Sothoth is the gate to, to, to where the old ones broke through of old. Their hands are uh, at your throats, yet ye see them not. Dr. Armitage, you see, I reckon I've got to take that book home. There's things in it I've got to try, and you can't hold me up. No, I'm sorry. I tell you, Doctor, I'll have the book sooner or later, no matter what. You see, it, that's waiting for me at home, won't wait much longer. <laughs> It was a week later that I was awakened suddenly by the fierce yelping of the great watchguard on the campus, followed by a sound from a wholly different throat, a scream. And I knew instantly that Wilbur had come back for the Necronomicon. I hastened into my clothes and rushed across to the library where a crowd had gathered before the smashed window of my office. Inside, there was a fearful groaning and growling, and some instinct warned me that what was taking place there was not for, for unfortified eyes to see. I brushed back the crowd, motioning only to Professor Rice to come in with me. When we opened the study door, Professor Rice screamed. No, Dr. Armitage, no, I come, can't. Come, close the door. We can't let them see. Oh, he's alive, but Lord, what, what a job that dog's done. Turn him to bits. Oh, that's a horrible sound, that moaning is. Suppose we ought to call a doctor? A doctor? A doctor for that? No doctor in the world would know what to do for that. Look, Armitage, it's not human, nor animal. Where did it come from? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what it is? No, I couldn't tell what Wilbur Wakely was. The thing that lay half bent on its side in a pool of greenish-yellow stickiness was nine feet tall. And the dog had torn off all the clothing and some of the skin. It was partly human, beyond a doubt, with very man-like hands and head, but, but the torso and lower parts of the body were... were fabulous. With chest had the leathery hide of a 
crocodile or alligator. But below the waistline, the skin was covered with coarse black fur. And from the abdomen, long greenish-gray tentacles. Now the limbs terminated in, in ridgy veined pads that were neither hooves nor claws. And as Dr. Rice and I stood tearing at this, this presence, the, the whippoorwills began to cry in unison outside the study window. And then the thing on the floor roused and mumbled. The whippoorwills. Listen. dead now. Look. Look, right. Look what's happening. He's... He's disintegrating. Of course. Fast, too. Fading away. Because he isn't made of, of matter as we know it on Earth. Uh, I, I guess he took after his father. So there'll be nothing left. His father? What was his father? Mm, I don't think. 